Now for one of my favorite parts of the show, when you guys get to be a part of it. So make sure you're continuing to get those questions in. Leave us voicemails at 213-537-9339. Get your burning questions in, your hot takes. If something's pissing you off, call me. If something's making you proud of your team, call me. If you have any questions, call me. So that is what we have right now our voicemails from our fans. So Rick, hit me with that first one. What's up, BV? This is new friend, Devo. Really enjoying the podcast so far. Uh, ones like this, 12-6 with players or former players. You get to see the different side of the game and go in farther than the just the numbers. It's great. I love it. Uh, big Astros fan. First question, uh, Carlos Correa. Are we not going to ever resign any of our homegrown talent? Uh, they just let Springer Walk, they've got Correa. Are we going to spend any money? I know we've got two big contracts coming off books this year. Hopefully one of them resigns. Uh, big fan of that brother of yours. Leads me into the second question. What's it like growing up with that guy? I know he's a little bit older than you, but uh, are we going to high school games when you're young, watching this kid just dominate? What was that like? You got any uh, stories for that part of it? Thanks. All right, Devo, thank you for the questions. Thank you for calling. So your first question was about Carlos Correa and, you know, being homegrown talent of the Astros. Is he going to resign? Here's my thought. Um, I, I do think so. He is, you know, when you, when you think about the Astros, one, you know, Carlos Correa is one of those guys. To me, the names that jump out, Correa, Altuve, Bregman. Those are kind of the guys. I think Correa has to be one of those guys that gets re-signed. And I really think now they're regretting not doing it in the offseason because of um, Francisco Lindor signing for the deal that he did. I think uh, Correa's kind of sitting there now like, <laughs> I'm going to get absolutely paid. And he's right. He's right. He's going to get paid. Lindor kind of set, uh, set the bar. I'm not saying Correa is going to get the money Lindor did, but the market is now kind of set by that contract. So I, but I do think uh, they're going to re-sign Correa. Uh, now, the second question was about my brother and growing up watching him and, and you know, watching him in high school. Yeah, um, my brother is nine years older than me. So I grew up watching the game. That's kind of why I fell in love with the game of baseball is because I was always around it from a super young age. I was never pressured into baseball. It was never, well, your brother plays it, you might as well. I just fell in love with the game constantly watching him from the day I was born. Uh, so to be able to see him, you know, grow up and, and be at all of his games and then get to high school and actually dominate was really cool. But actually a funny story about him, his uh, senior year in high school, there was a game where he had a bunch of professional scouts showing up. Um, my brother never got drafted out of high school and he was still pretty, pretty dominant. So I, I'd say somebody that gets drafted second overall out of college typically has gotten drafted out of high school, but he never did. And I remember specifically there was a game that had um, a lot of professional scouts there. And my brother actually had the flu uh, when he was going to, to pitch that day. And he ended up pitching and was throwing like 80, 85 to 87 miles an hour. And everybody was like, <laughs> no, see ya. And uh, then they never ended up drafting him. He ends up going on to Old Dominion. And uh, the rest is history. Had a pretty good a pretty good outcome, I would say. So, Devo, thank you for the question. Let's get to question number two. Hey there, Ben. This is Jake Mintz of Fox Sports. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, when you were playing baseball in the minor leagues, did you ever get to first base uh, and let out an absolutely righteous fart um, <laughs> and had to have an uncomfortable interaction with the first baseman? Just always very interested about what goes on over there at first. So if you can answer my question on the podcast, that would be great. Have a phenomenal, phenomenal day. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So first off, Jake, thank you so much for that uh, very in-depth, elaborate question. Appreciate that. Secondly, I love the interactions that go on at first base. I think you know it's something that not a lot of people really know about and understand, but you really do like create these these bonds with with first baseman when you get over there um you know that's how you know, i got to know reese hoskins who's a, a future guest on the show um it, it, they're really cool interactions now with that said there are always things that that go on that 
you know, are like, what just happened? Like, what did you just say? Or blah, blah, blah. Um, so in, in terms of myself, I have not let out a, I think he said a righteous fart. I, have, I never did that on first base. However, it has happened when I am getting my lead on first base. And I remember specifically, I don't remember who it was, um, but I remember specifically like starting to get my lead and this dude just like lets one rip. And I look over at him and he's like, sorry, dude, tough day. I'm like, tough day, man, I get it. <laughs> and it's just like these bonds that you create over whatever it may be, struggling at the plate, hitting well at the time, how good the pitcher is, farts, a lot of cool bonds that happen there uh, on first base. So Jake, thank you so much for that question. Much, much appreciated, my friend. All right, number three. Hey, Ben, JT, watching the uh, Braves game last night. And uh, just wondering, what's the point of having replay if they're going to get it wrong? Because we all know that Alec Baum's foot did not touch home plate, and even he knows it didn't touch home plate. So let me know what you think. All right. So, yeah, for those of you that watched the Sunday night baseball game on Sunday night, you are probably aware of the call that happened. But for those of you that did not see it and have not heard what happened, um, there was a play in the in the last inning that ended up being the winning run. There's a shallow fly ball to left fear, field. Alec Baum runs home. Uh, close play at the plate. He's called safe. Um, you know, it, it didn't look like the right or wrong call on the field. It's tough to tell in the moment. But it goes to replay. Uh, as it starts being showed, everyone says, okay, okay, he's out. The Braves are walking off the field. The fans in Atlanta are cheering. Braves literally are off the field. Replay continues, continues, continues. They call him safe. Brian Snicker freaks out, comes running out. The Phillies even look surprised. Um, by all accounts in the replay, he was out. He never touched home plate was the problem. He beat the throw, but he never touched home plate. And there, you know, the, the view that they kept showing, it was tough to tell. But there were a couple views in there that we got that made it obvious that he was out. So my thought there, JT, one, thank you for calling, is that, yeah, the wrong call was made. Clearly, I think, you know, a lot of people are in agreement there. Here's the big issue for me, a much broader issue than that call right there. Replay. There's a big issue with replay, and I'm tired of it. How do you go to replay and get that call wrong? Here's the problem, and here's what we're always told. Well, you know, they're probably going to stick with the call on the field. And it's almost like, yeah, you know, there's an 80% chance he was out. But, uh, you know, because of that extra 20%, we're not sure. We're just going to stick with the call on the field. Why are we sticking with the call on the field when umpires have proven over and over that they're not getting calls right all the time? Why are we giving them the benefit of the doubt that they got a call right? We're going to replay for a reason. The whole point of replay is to get the call right on the field. And it feels like they aren't doing that. They're sticking with the call. So I don't exactly know what the solution is. There needs to be a change. But you know, here, here would be my, my solution. Is So the umpires get together, the crew chief and the umpire that made the call. They get together. They go on the, the phone and they talk to New York, who makes a call. What I think needs to happen, because there needs to be a switch, instead of these umpires getting on and, and saying, hey, uh, we're going to review, the call on the field was safe, uh, can you guys review this and let us know what you think? We, that needs to change. We, here's what needs to happen. They need to go to review the person or whoever's watching that specific game that's in charge of this at, in New York should not know the call on the field. So they don't have in their head, okay, it was called safe. Okay, it was an out. My fallback option will be to just stick with that call. If it's not 100% definitive, I'm just going to stick with them. I'm tired of that. So what I think should happen is they shouldn't know the call on the field, and the video that they get in New York should cut off right before you see the umpire safe or out. So literally just the exact play, and then the feed stops so they can't see the umpire's call. I honestly, I, I don't have, you know, I, I don't know the best way to handle it. I know this would be better, 
because it seems like far too often we're just getting, uh, yeah, we're just going to stick with that one. Just, just stick with being safe. And then it comes out, everybody in the world is pissed off at the call last night. Mike Trout said, wow, that's bad. Players are, are tuning in and, and tweeting about it. Everybody in the world knew. So how do we not get that call right? And how do we let that game in like that? I'm tired of that. I'm way too tired of seeing that happen in baseball. The same thing's happening in the NFL. If I had a football podcast, I'd say the exact same thing on football because replay needs to be fixed. I love replay in itself. It needs to be fixed the way they go about it. Whew. Replay, man. Gets me all fired up. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, and just talking ball, hit that subscribe button.